Everyone, I have a big update for you now regarding the latest coming out of the Hill Country in the rescue and recovery efforts. Of course, usually at this time I bring you Kent's 5 News now with our local news, but given what's happening and the circumstances now, all our focus is on the Hill Country and everything that's coming out of that area. I'm going to be talking about the recovery efforts, also new ways that you can help with donations. I know so many of you have asked that question, how you can help, and I have a few ways you can do that. Warnings from state officials about what to do and what not to do, and also how the rescue efforts are going at this hour. I do want to begin with the latest numbers that um, have come out of this recovery effort so far. Uh, again, uh, this is absolutely uh, devastating and our hearts and prayers are out there with the families that are still waiting to hear word on their children and on their loved ones. But um, as of this, the latest count according to the Kerr County Sheriff, 87 bodies have been recovered, 56 of them are adults, 30 are children, some are still unidentified, five girls and one counselor from Camp Mystic are still unaccounted for. Um, as you know, um, some of the bodies have been very difficult to identify, so they have mentioned that they're using DNA testing. Um, those were mentioned in past conferences. They said that they've collected DNA samples from families, and they're taking those and they're uh, shipping, them to, uh, shipping them to Dallas for expedited service. What normally takes days will only take hours. They're trying to get those identifications for families as soon as possible. A couple of other things that they mentioned is that the last live rescue was made on Friday and they did mention that hundreds of first responders right now are working along the Guadalupe River federal state and city and they're asking private boats to please stay out. They said they've run into private boats and those are interfering with rescue efforts. They also had an incident yesterday where a private drone collided with a rescue helicopter damaging equipment and of course that puts them behind. So now they're having to figure that part of the process. So if you would like to help, please, private drones, private boats, helicopters that are private, just um, don't use them right now because they do have their own first responders with a very coordinated effort. We also heard from the Kerrville mayor talking about all the support that's coming in. He thanked everyone. He said it has been uh, incredibly overwhelming to see the amount of love and support, not just from Texas, but from all over the country. In fact, there's so much coming in, so many donations that they're overwhelmed with all of that and they're having to establish a new system that will make it a little easier for them to process all these donations and keep them organized so they can pass them on to the people who need that help. And they said that as soon as they figure out that new system, they will let us know. Also, monetary donations, they have established a direct line, and that is communityfoundation.net. All that money will go directly to the Hill Country. It is a community foundation of the Texas Hill Country. Again, communityfoundation.net if you would like to make a monetary donation to them. And finally, the mayor asked specifically for um, prayers for those who mourn, for those who wait, and for those who help, he said. Our prayers are with you in the Texas Hill Country and with all the families that are dealing with this and also the families that are um, recovering. I know a lot of people lost. Uh, there's a lot of loss of human life and a lot of property damage as well. And um, you're trying to recover as you're grieving and we're right there with you. Um, as for the Kerrville Police Department, they talked about safety issues right now. There's a lot of erosion on the on the roads and a lot of buckling, so they're asking residents if you don't have to be out and about, just try to stay um, close to home. And if, if you are out there and you have questions, they said um, they have first responders out there, so just flag them down and ask them whatever questions you have, and they'll be happy to guide you to where you need to go. If you do come across a victim, they're asking that you call 911 or the non-emergency line 830-257-8181. Again, if you see a victim, please don't act on your own. Just call 911 or that phone line. And, and limit traveling. If you do not live in the area, please do not go out there and sightsee. They said they're seeing so many people who are trying to look at the damage themselves. And yes, while it is, uh, you know, you have a lot of curiosity because people want to see it for themselves. There are a lot of people coming in the in the way of rescue efforts right now, and that's the last thing that they need. So we can't really emphasize that enough. Um, please stay out of the way of rescue efforts. Just stay at home. Um, there's, there's a ton of video online that you can look at if you're really curious about what it looks like out there. We also heard from the Texas Game Wardens, Lieutenant Colonel Ben Baker, who talked about uh, how right now as they're doing these rescue search efforts, it's extremely challenging because um, they're having to walk 
more than 20 miles in pretty treacherous terrain. Uh, large piles of debris right now, and they're using canines, and th those, you know, those piles of debris are really obstructive, and they're getting into deep piles that they're having to sort through, and there's a lot of hazardous uh, situations out in that area. They said they have highly specialized units in swift water recovery specifically, but still, they said that they're having to peel layer by layer for the safety of those first responders because you don't know what's coming their way. You don't know right now what is in that water. There's just so much that they're dealing with. So it's taking more time than um, it would normally take just because of the amount of area that they're having to cover more than 20 miles. And because of where it is and some of it is rural, they're having to walk on foot in, in many of those areas. And they're having to do so very carefully to ensure that nobody is hurt in the process. Mental health has been a big issue that you said, obviously a big key component, I should say, to their operation. Um, these said that you are seeing a lot of very difficult things to see. They said it's very tragic to see human life and let alone to see um, a child. It is extremely tragic and of course we know in this situation um, there are a lot of children involved in this. A lot of children have been uh, swept up in the water and um, they're making a lot of those recoveries. Um, <clears throat> that's for the Kerr County Sheriff. Um, we did hear from him again a second time. Um, this time he was answering reporter questions, and I'm going to share those with you just because I know the community has been asking those questions, and I want you to hear their answers for now. Um, one reporter asked what happened in those first hours between 1.14 a.m. when first flood emergency alert and hours later when rivers started to flow. So between 1.14 a.m. and when the rivers started to flood, what happened in those hours? Where were the alerts? And um, the sheriff says he first got notified around 4 or 5 a.m. with the first 911 call coming in. He said uh, his priority now is locating, identifying, and notifying next of kin. He said that's what he's focusing on. Another reporter asked the community is asking what happened, when it happened, uh, where was the emergency manager? Was that person awake? And why didn't they, was it just a matter of really pushing a button to issue that emergency alert? And the sheriff said it's not that easy to just push a button. As for who runs the emergency operations center, that was another question. The sheriff said, we have a communication center, a dispatch. The calls go to the police department and they are forwarded to the sheriff's department. So those were the answers with the outcome, mainly um, the sheriff and the game warden, the Lieutenant Colonel Baker saying our focus now is on rescue and recovery efforts and um, all the other questions they will try to answer later. Uh, something else to note that is important that for, for specifically for flood victims, if you're watching this now, you are a flood victim. We know it is so much to take in and you're dealing with a lot. Teladoc Health says it is offering free mental health resources, 24-7 virtual care. They are offering free 24-7 virtual care, saying that their partner, BetterHelp, is now offering three months of free online therapy as well. All you have to do is contact email email contact at betterhelp.com again the email is contact at betterhelp.com they said you do not need insurance it is a hundred percent virtual and they are available anytime anywhere video phone or text and they will connect you with a licensed therapist within 48 hours it's absolutely free of charge for you that is a look at your latest update right now we are expecting a 3 p.m press conference from governor greg abbott with the latest update i'm going to try to keep you in the loop and of course be sure to download the kens 5 plus app on your tv and the kens 5 app on your phone because we are live not just on your tv but on the kens 5 plus app you can watch us for free and on your phone we're live Live streaming everything all the press conferences we're taking them live and of course our newscasts at 5, 4 p.m. 5 p.m. 6 p.m. and again at 10 p.m. if you have any questions please reach out to me we are taking your questions we want to try and answer everything that you uh, you have concerns about thank you guys I will see you later